So he that sows the seed and he that reaps the seed each get the same reward in God's eyes. You know why? Because it's God that gives the increase. It's God that causes that sinner to repent and turn to heaven. We can't take credit for that. Only God. That's why it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now recording. <laughs> Thank you. Now we are recording. Wednesday night or Thursday night church. Amen. All right. Let's look at another rejoicing scripture. Isaiah 16, 9 says. Therefore, I will bewail the vine of Sibma with the weeping of Jazar. I will drench you with my tears, O Hezbon and Eliath, for battle cries have fallen over your summer fruits and your harvest. Gladness is taken away and the joy from the plentiful field in the vineyard, there, there will be no singing, nor will there be shouting. No treaders will tread out wine in the, in the presses. I have made their shouting cease. Now, this is kind of a sad example of what happens when there is no harvest to bring in. When there's no rejoicing, when there's no fruit, because... There was no sowing. You can't have reaping unless you have sowing. You can't expect a harvest if you haven't sown any seeds. Now, as Christians, we're called to sow. We are called to plant. We are called to water. Why? Because that's our job. The minute you got saved and born again and the Spirit came upon you, you became enlisted in the army of the Lord, whether you knew it or not. Welcome to the army. Welcome. But now you're not just a soldier. You're a, you're a farmer. You're planting seeds everywhere you go. Let's look at that one scripture that we, that we said last week was kind of the theme of it all, which, which was Psalm in the Psalms 126.6. This kind of ties it all together for us tonight. That little bit. He who continually goes forth weeping, bearing a trail of seed. He who goes forth bearing a trail of seed, leaving breadcrumbs. You ever heard that saying, I'm going to leave breadcrumbs. And so if I get lost, I can find my way back to where I need to be. What I want to ask you, are there enough breadcrumbs in your life that would lead somebody to Jesus? Are there enough breadcrumbs? Have you left enough of the gospel behind you that somebody following you could find Jesus? Wow, now that's a question. <laughs> that is a question. I mean, you know what I mean? You're at work, and, and are you laughing it up with them about stuff that you shouldn't be laughing about? Are you are you giving in to talk that you shouldn't? Are you are you are you being a witness or are you not being a witness? Because that's really the nitty gritty of this message. Are we, are we leaving a trail of seed behind? Are we bearing the precious seed? Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. Those who sow in tears will reap 
when the harvest comes in, they'll reap in the joy. He that goes forth bearing precious seed, continually leaving a trail behind of seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing. With rejoicing. See, there's the joy. There's the joy. Bringing in the sheaves. The sheave was a, a sheave of wheat. A sheave of wheat. A wheat, bringing in the wheat is bringing in people. Wheat symbolizes lost souls, people that are lost, that we're bringing into God's kingdom. I'm going to bring this into the New Testament now. Luke 15, 7. Hey, Hey, uh, Squid, how you doing? Welcome. I say to you that likewise there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. It's okay. You're never interrupting. I appreciate you coming in and letting us know. But we're going to pray for you, definitely. Hang on, and when, when I'm done with, with the lesson, we'll be praying for you, okay? But thank you for letting us know. You got 99 people that are sitting in a church tonight and they're happy they're rejoicing why because they're saved they have jesus but you know the lord's not satisfied with that is he no what does he do he leaves the 99 he goes out after that one sheep that's lost their way and what does he do he puts them on his shoulder. And he brings them back home. He brings them back. That's the heart of our Lord. The heart of our Lord is the heart of a soul winner. The heart of a shepherd that doesn't want one soul to be lost. The rejoicing of one soul. The Bible said the angels in heaven rejoice. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. There is joy. The angels are, are rejoicing. The angels are happy. The angels are throwing a party. Every time somebody gets saved. Glory to God. I've often wondered, do we rejoice? Do we rejoice in the same way? When somebody comes to the Lord. Are we rejoicing with that person? Amen. I want to give you three examples. Of people. That came to the Lord. In their testimonies. Several, several years ago. I was. I happened to be. Out. And I had been praying and. I was a young Christian at that point. I hadn't been saved that long. I went to Bible college and it was in the summer. I think it was in between when I was in, in going back and forth. And I lived in a, uh, I lived near this, this park. And in the park, there were about 20, I don't know, 20, 25 
teenagers and I wasn't that much older than them at the time. I might have been 19 or 20. And they were skateboarding. And I don't know, the Lord just came on me and I started preaching. It just came, came about. I can't even explain it. But I'm preaching and I'm talking about, don't even ask. I don't even remember. It is inconsequential to the story. But I don't know what all I said. I remember certain things about Revelation and the end of the end of the world and different things. And I was preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when I was done, they were like stunned just looking at me. Probably thought I was crazy. <laughs> and maybe I was. But at least I I, I said I might be I, I might be uh I might be a nut, but at least I'm screwed to the right bolt. <laughs> Glory to God. But anyway, so I said, if you want to accept Christ, I want you to follow me to the other side of the building. And those of you that want to accept Christ right now as your Savior, come and follow me. I'm going to pray with you. Now, I didn't expect maybe one, two, maybe at the most. But I didn't expect all of them to follow me to the other side of the building. <laughs> At which time I proceeded in praying with them to receive Christ into their life. And I mean to tell you, that was that was an amazing thing. Because that was the Holy Spirit. It was God that came on me. I didn't do things like that all the time. But it just, it just happened. And so I, I you know, I... I don't know how many of them actually followed through with it. I tried to, you know, do all I could. At that time, I was a youth pastor at, at the church that I was going to. But one kid, I remember, in particular, really got saved and on fire for God and wanted to know more about Jesus. And I began to take him with me to church because he lived near me. So I'd pick him up and we'd go. And he started to develop in Christ like you wouldn't believe. He was growing in the Lord. And God blessed him. That's the rejoicing. That is the rejoicing of somebody that wasn't going the right way, but God directed them. Now they're going the right way. And they accepted Christ. Another moment that I had, and I just chose a few. I could have chosen many more but these were the ones that stood out to me today but i remember one night i was preaching online like this i was in another chat and we had video and everything and this young lady came on during the during the beginning of the service and she said excuse me i don't know why i'm here but she said i was only curious to check this out and i was going to leave but she said for some reason i feel like god wants me to listen to what you're saying i said praise god i said you're welcome and whatever and i kept on preaching because i believe the word of god is what does the work so i'm preaching the word and all of that and i get down to the end of end of my service And the Holy Spirit began to touch her heart. And she went on cam. And she was telling us all of these things that God did in her life when she was a young teenager. She was, in, I think, in her early 20s now. But when she was a teenager, she went to camp, Bible camp. And in Bible camp, she had written all these things in her Bible that God was speaking to her about. That she, God wanted her to go into missions. And be a missionary and all these things. And she had written all that in her Bible. But then she had a, a relationship with the guy and broke up with him. And it, it tore her up inside. And so she kind of gave up on God. So that night, <laughs> she comes into a chat room. She's never been in in her life. And boom, the Lord hit her full force. And in real time. And on video, she's reading that, that Bible, and she's reading those notes, and she showed us. 
and she's crying, tears down her face. And she realized that she forgot the Lord. And that night, while we were watching, the most amazing thing happened. She started to get right with God. She started to pray and ask the Lord to forgive her. And this was nothing we did. We had nothing to do with it other than we just were online at the right time. And she, she gave her heart and life back to the Lord that night. And I mean to tell you, that was, that was a rejoicing moment. We rejoiced with her. We were praising the Lord. And we used to have all the time when, when we were on the, another site, and we'd have people that would get saved almost every day. And we had this thing when somebody got saved, we had these little emojis of, that kind of showed people rejoicing. And we'd put their emojis up. And we wanted to make sure that we were rejoicing with those that were getting saved because that's what the Bible says. When you bring in the harvest, when somebody gets saved, you rejoice. Why? Because they were lost, but now they're found. Now they're found. They have found Christ. And their life has meaning like it never had. Because now they're complete as a human. Because now they have the Savior, the Lord of glory living in them and the last one this one here is it's it's a hard story for me to tell because of the pain that this person was going through in their life some people i would say the devil has done more to try to destroy than others and they have gone through hell and back a young lady named Caitlin, same thing, came into our chat room one afternoon. And she was texting in the chat that she wanted to kill herself. And she was looking for a easy way to end her life with pills or something. Where, and she said, I was looking in all these chat rooms and I came across this chat and she said, for some reason, again, for some reason, I came in here not knowing why totally, but just felt led to come in here. And so I took her into private chat. I didn't want to. I, I just could tell this person was carrying some weight. So I began to talk to her and I just let her vent for like a half hour. She just started, you know, we're text chatting. And she's just telling me all of these things that happened in her life. And to be honest with you, I've heard about everything. But this one here, it rattled me. Because when she was like 14 or 15, I can't remember. She was at home and her dad was in his room. And he took his life. He shot himself in the head. She heard the gun go off, didn't know what it was, went into the room and found him there dead with a bullet hole in his head. Her brother was in prison for trying to sexually abuse her and her whole life was destroyed. Okay. That was something that I was not prepared for. Uh, what, what do you say to somebody? How do you help somebody like that? They're obviously going through trauma and she's been in a psychiatric health uh, hospital. She, she'd been trying to, you know, was on medicine to try to cope. Her mother was left with all of the scars of that, her older brother was they're all reeling from all of this and it had only been maybe a year or two since it happened that I was speaking to her about this and I began to just feel the Lord telling me to listen to her listen to this person they've got something to share and so I began to listen and as I listened after a period of time I said you know what I said 
I said, the Lord loves you. And he's got a plan for your life. And I, I don't know what all I said to her. But I felt like what she needed was to know reassurance that she was going to be okay. That she could come back from this. That it didn't have to be the end of her life. That she didn't need to end her life. And I found out she was cutting herself in the wrist and doing all of these things, you know. And over time, it didn't happen right away. But through weeks and weeks and weeks of just talking, chatting, praying with her, giving her scripture, she ended up coming to the Lord. She ended up finding a church in her neighborhood that cared about her, that loved her. She was going to that church for a while. I don't know if she stayed going, but she went for a while and she began to come out of the situation. But it was gradual. It wasn't instantaneous. But I remember the day that she told me she had been in the hospital again, depression, the, the situation had overwhelmed her again. She was thinking about suicide again. But she kept coming back and she kept talking to me and she, she kept trying to work it out. And I said to her that day, I said, you know what? I'm going to tell you something about faith. I said, right now, you're listening to the voices in your head. And these voices are telling you to kill yourself. But I said, there's a voice that's greater than that. And it's the voice of Jesus. And I said, you need to listen to that voice because that voice will set you free. And something about that night, something about what I said, it just spoke to her. And she said for the first time in I don't know how long she felt something inside of her snap. And that demon or that that demonic, you know, oppression that was on her just broke and she began to understand for the first time what it means to have faith in God and the thing was her mom taught at a Catholic school she was student teaching at that school with her mom she was not really a student teacher she was a she hadn't had a degree yet but she was assistant a helper and so she started working at that school and she started to believe. I kept telling her, you need to believe even when those voices are telling you something different, you need to believe in God. You need to have faith in, in the Lord and his word. And over time, God delivered her. She went to college. I think by now, she, I haven't talked to her in, in a while, but she was she was in college. She was taking classes. Another friend of hers came into our chat, was worried about her one day because she hadn't, but I, she hadn't been on our chat for a while and I was worried about her. And so she sent this friend of hers to come on to tell me that she was back in the hospital. And I said, okay. And this girl was like giving me the message. So I began to talk to her and lo and behold, after a short talk, she gets saved. She comes to the Lord. <laughs> She's got problems in her life, but they're not as bad as severe as Caitlin's. So now I got somebody else in her area that has accepted Christ that can be my go between with her. So we started to have this thing where if I didn't hear from Kate, she would come in and let me know what was going on. And this person in the process got saved. So it was an awesome thing. And this is what God does. So we rejoice when somebody that has trauma in their life, when somebody's life is so broken and the devil just beats somebody up to the point where they 
seem to not have a life anymore. Jesus would take that one, wouldn't he? He would deliver them and he would put them on his shoulder and he would bring them back home. That's what he would do. And that's what he does. And so we're called to be net menders. We're called to mend the nets. That's literally what that means. When you, when you care for somebody else, you're mending their net. Sometimes somebody's net gets a hole in it. And you go alongside that person and you mend their net. You pray for them. You pray that if they come to the Lord and they're following Jesus, that they'll stay with the Lord, that they'll stay strong, that they'll commit their ways to the Lord. This is what we do. We bring in with tears sometimes those people that need Christ. I've seen it. I've done inner city ministry. I've been in the ghettos of Detroit. I've been all over. I've been in Boston, New York City. It is a discipleship. You're right, cool zone. It's not, it's not a religion. It's a relationship. And it's relationships. This is why what we do on, online is so important. Because we're building relationships with each other, aren't we? I mean, I don't know you guys that well because I see you for a short window. But each day that you come on here, I'm getting to know you better. Hopefully, you're getting to know me better. And hopefully, as we grow together in Christ, we can start seeing more people coming to the Lord. But it's these things that people need. They need to know that, number one, God loves them. Number two, God cares about them. And number three, they can be reached. They're not unreachable. See, the devil will lie to you and say, you're not able to be reached. I've had people tell me, I can't be saved. I had one lady tell me that she couldn't be saved. Let's pray for let's pray for him because I know sometimes I can go long and I I, I want to make sure we pray for for uh, our friend here. Let's lift him up right now together. Let's join together in prayer. Um, what's your first name? It's just so I can give it to the Lord. You don't have to give me your last name or anything. Just your first name. I don't want to call you Squid in prayer. All right. What's your first name, Doom Squid? I want to pray for you, but I want to I want to lift you up by your right name. We're going to join together and believe God.
All right. I don't know if he heard me or understands. I'm just going to pray for him. Let's let's pray together. Father, we just lift up our friend that needs this oxygen machine for his breathing. But we know, Lord, that you're a healing God and that you are capable of healing him in his lungs and in his body. And we would not be doing justice if we didn't ask you to completely heal him. But, Father, if, it, if it's healing through this, the helping of this machine or, or however you want to do it, it's your will, Lord. It's your way. And we lift him up, Father God, and we pray for him right now that you will touch him in his body and heal him, Lord. And deliver him and set him free. Help him, Lord, to be able to live a long life for you. And that he will be able to sing the praises of the Lord. Even in this time of his life when he's very sick. And his body is weak. And it's hard, Lord, to have faith when our body's down. But we pray for him, Lord. We lift him up in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed. Not only for our sins, but for our healing. And Lord, you healed many, 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 many people in, in the New Testament. And I pray, Lord, you'll heal him in Jesus' mighty and holy name. We lift him up, Father. We pray that your, your blessed hand would be upon him. We pray, God, that you would do a mighty work in his life. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray, God, your will be done. Go. So my question is, it would be that how would you, like uh, you were talking about how to plant, like planting seeds and then watering them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, how would you like plant the seeds? Like what would you do? Okay. That's a good question because there is no one way. Um, basically, the best way is to just pray and ask the Lord to use you in, in sharing the Lord. A lot of times sharing the Lord or, or planting a seed might just be somebody that you see, whether it be at school or a friend or whatever, and you just say, hey, maybe they talk to you about something in their life or maybe they're, they're having a problem and you just say, you know what, I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to you know, or invite them to church, invite them to a live stream. That's a way. Or praying for somebody, that's a way. Or, you know, you can do what some people do. You can, you can, um, it's hard by yourself to do it, to go out and, you know, plant seeds. Like, I mean, we, we used to go out like, years ago when I was involved in personal evangelism in churches, and we would train people how to do it. And we would go out as a team in the neighborhoods and we would do this. You know, sharing Christ, inviting people to church. That's that's a great way to plant a seed, right? But planting a seed is just opening up a conversation with somebody. And so that's that's all it is. And there are many ways to do it. You can pass out, you know, you can you could get we used to call them gospel tracks. I don't know what people call them anymore. But you can get there's still tracks. Okay, you can get tracks. And you can you can share those. You can you can actually. Uh, uh, one of the things we're going to be doing is making a business cards for Jesus Connect, and maybe that's a way that we could, you know, give people um, access to those somehow. You know, and then you could share those with people and just invite them to Discord or whatever. That's a way to do it. Or you can just you know just be open to people when you hear people talk if they ever bring something up i remember once when i was working this 
job at uh, Roush Motors when I was driving, test driving cars, new cars and stuff. That one time I was with this guy for two nights and he was, uh, you know, we finally had like the third night in a row that we were together on this, on this, you know, eight hour shift for three different days. On the third night we were having a break and I just brought up something about, you know, how glad I was that, um, uh, I had a good service or something that we did online the night before and I was really excited about it or whatever. I forget what I said, but it triggered something in him. And he goes, he goes, praise the Lord. You're a Christian too. And I'm like, yeah. And we just, you know, three nights went by and finally, yeah, we, we, we connected on that that we were both Christians, but sometimes it's just, you know, pray about it. That's the best answer I could give you. Pray how you can plant the seeds in people's lives. But if you're open to it, that's the key. Because a lot of Christians, believe me, they're not even open to, in entertaining the idea of planting seeds. They're just going to church or they're just reading the Bible, but they're not looking at it like, I need to be actively spreading the seed. Mm -hmm. and, and so we can do it many ways. Um, I am going to start that class now. I have to look at something on the domain you were brought, you brought up. I don't know what happened there. It was working. Now it's not. <laughs> so I'm not sure why. I'm not sure what happened there, but it doesn't make any sense because domains just don't stop working unless there's a problem with something. And I got to go back and look at it, but that's, again you know part of what we're doing now here's the other thing I, yeah i know i understand they can but whatever i got to go back and look at it but here's the thing we are going to use a, a key a key a q code too with some of these flyers and things that we're doing so people can click on it and go right to discord or whatever so that's something in the works as well all right i hope that helps okay. i hope that helps but when yes. I, when I do the class, I'm going to get more involved in giving you things that you can do, and it'll it'll be good. Okay. Good question. Thank man. you. Well, that's the thing. The, the domain is, is good till 2023, so I, I'm not really sure what's going on with it, but I'll figure it out. Yeah. I'm sure it's just something that Now, what, what I'll do is I, I know what to do. I got to check with the site that we're on, the, the actual site that we're hosting it on, and make sure that they didn't do something to the domain by accident or something, and it might be on their end. So I'll figure it out. Are you talking about the JesusConnect.net? Jesus Connect dot net? Yeah. yeah, actually, it actually does work. Um, I, I think you... Um, I think we forgot to put in the the www though. Oh uh, yeah, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> www, it, it but it shouldn't have to have www. That's the thing. Uh, if if it does, and there's something in the way that it was set up, that's requiring that, and that's usually you can just put in the JesusConnect.net. But I see what you're saying, and so I'm gonna have to. Um, I'm gonna have to see what's up with that but yeah yeah okay i got it now all right well anyway <laughs> thank you for letting me know that that was pretty important so it, it it what's gonna happen is i'm gonna go back into the settings i'm gonna take out www and it's just gonna pull it up with jesusconnect.net or it'll pull it up at www. Either way, that way it doesn't. Because if you're giving somebody a link and you add www, it's no problem. They're going to connect to it every time. But if you just say it's jesusconnect.net and they type it in, it's not pulling it up. And that's ridiculous. It should pull it up no matter what. So I got to figure, I got to fix that. 
But anyway, thanks for letting me know. It's always something, isn't it? <laughs> it's always something. <laughs> Thanks for coming, everybody. And if you have uh, any more questions or prayer needs, let us know. And I think this class we're going to start in in May or June is going to be pretty good. I think people will come to it, will really like it. One of the things I wanted to do was do a live, you know, go out and with a video cam and just talk to people, talk to them, ask them questions about what they believe or what whatever, and just get people's opinions on things. I think it could be fun, interesting, and I think it would make for great video. <laughs> it could also be a little crazy, but uh, you might do that. Yeah, I do have one question. Go ahead. It's like whenever we go out and like plant the seed and all that, like. Sometimes, like, I'll try and, like, spread the word. Mm -hmm. And, like, sometimes I'll face, like, a lot of prejudice from people. Like, people just tell me, well, like, well, what's the point? Why are you doing this? Or, like, you're dumb. Why should I listen to you and stuff mm -hmm. like that? Like, I don't know. Like, I tried spreading the word before, and all I get is sometimes hate. And am I supposed to expect that as a Christian? Oh, yeah. Or am I doing it the wrong way? Well, yeah, you're supposed to. Jesus said if, 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 they, if they persecuted me, they'll persecute you. So that's actually a badge of honor to wear. If you're being persecuted, that means you're, you're actually doing something right for the Lord. Now, people are going to have different opinions, period. And, and that's okay. You, you gotta ha you, you're going to have to learn how to get past their objections, you know what I mean, and get to the root of the gospel with them. And yeah. the best well, way there's this one girl I used to talk to. She used to be a doubter. Now she's saved. Well, that's great. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the rejoicing that? part, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know. Like, at least with the bad feeling, whenever I get talked and I don't feel like that, but I guess it's got to deal with it, you know? Everything's well, in the Lord's plan. Jesus is our greatest example of how to how to witness to people. He always asks them, when they ask him a question, he would ask them a question. So his question would then become greater than theirs, and they would not know how to answer it many times. One of the things that he did was he would do that. He would say, uh, who, who is John's baptism from? And they'd go, well, how do we answer that? If we say it's from heaven, then we're acknowledging John, and John was the one that said Jesus was greater than him. <laughs> so now we're, what do we do? If we say it was from God, then we have to accept that Jesus is from God. So basically that question cornered them in a way that that was wisdom, right? I mean, to answer, to ask that question. So the best way to, to witness, I mean, if you're debating, I mean, with somebody and they're asking you a question, ask them a question. There you go. Good job. Good job. Good verse, Aggie. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Yeah, you'll learn as you go and, and do it. Now, it's it's always better to have somebody with you when you're witness. If you have a problem or somebody, you know, gets violent, you always want to have somebody to have your back. You, know, you don't have to pack or anything. You don't have to carry a gun or anything like that. But you might want to go out there with a little bit of. Uh... But the problem is a lot of churches today don't do outreach anymore like that. They don't do evangelism. Or you do have some, but it's fewer and far between now because the church has adopted this kind of passive stance where they just, you know, don't 
really go out and share anymore. It's more like, hey, we'll wait for them to come to us. But that's not what Jesus said to do at all. He said, go into all the world. So that's why, you know, when we do this class, it's not just going to be a class. We're going to actually have act, act, you know, activity and we're going to do it. We're going to go out and do it one way or the other. All right, we're going to close with prayer, and we'll be back tomorrow night. Oh, don't forget to pray for the Ukraine. I mean, my mind is not really very good lately. So if I forget something, remind me. But you see behind me, we have this up every – we don't want to become passive about it. You know, like it's getting bad over there. My friend Johnny, that is uh, our friend here, he – texted us and said that they're on the move now that's where they were at is starting to they're starting to get shelled so his uh, experience there is not good he him and his family they've had to flee and they're going to lose everything their business their money i told him we'd lift them up in prayer tonight and of course, always lifting them up in prayer, but let's pray for them right now and pray for Ukraine. Lord, we just lift up Johnny and his family as they're on the move. We pray for protection. We pray that your hand would be upon them and guide them to safety and security. Guide them to a, a, the ability to get food and, and, and shelter and, and get away from this. I, I pray for them, God, in the mighty name of Jesus, that you would bless them in this time and lord we ask in jesus name that you'll be with all of ukraine we pray for them lord these atrocities that are coming more and more frequently of killing of people just murdering them we ask god that your hand would stay this violence in jesus name and that you would bring a stop to this war an end to this war that you would cause something to happen lord a sovereign work of your grace of your power and that Putin would be stopped in his tracks and that he would not be able to continue, Lord, ordering these killings. We, we pray for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Put a hedge of, of your blessing around them, Lord. They fought so valiantly for their freedoms and for their country and for their land. We ask, God, that you would move upon them and give them victory over the enemy. And the enemy isn't the Russians. The enemy is not even Putin, it's the devil, it's Satan who is the evil one that puts this evil in these dictators' hearts. And we pray, God, that Satan would be bound in the name of Jesus and the blood of the Lamb would be applied, Lord God, wherever the enemy would try to strike. Your word, God, your power would deliver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Tomorrow night, we're going to have a little more update on ukraine and we're going to do a little more praying for the ukraine specifically amen and we're going to believe god for johnny and, and his family and we might not hear from him for a while if he's on the run and he hopefully we do and he can tell us that he's okay and 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 i just you know it it, it hurts me to think that i know somebody personally in this you know i mean it's just it's, it's an unbelievable feeling i i just feel so much for him and his family i kind of got to know him over time i know he's a good guy and he loves the lord and he's trying and he's talented his family i didn't know if, if i told you guys but the, they're beekeepers they make honey. That's how they get their, their money. They produce a lot of honey. And uh, so that business is their livelihood. And that business is probably going to be gone. 
but they can re they can rebuild with God's grace that God preserves them and so we, that's what we're praying for but anyway so I'm gonna say good night and pray that God blesses us another day tomorrow and gives us more opportunities but yeah, do all you can to share the word and let God use you and bring the harvest in. And invite people to our, our Easter celebration because that's going to be a good opportunity for us to share the gospel with a lot of people um, and so on and so forth. All right. Well, God bless you. And we'll see you guys tomorrow night. Have a good one.